welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques and today we're going to talk about how to alter the fit of this sheer lace sheath bridal gown. <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. I would like to switch to doing, uh, you know, making more videos and digital downloads and things for you guys to help you out and less sewing uh, for the public. So hopefully that's coming very, very soon. But in the meantime, um, you guys have been asking, I keep getting questions about this. Somebody even sent me pictures of this dress. How do you alter this dress in particular? Um, and it kind of caught me off guard when I first got the question because I thought, well, wouldn't it be like any other dress? Well, well, any other dress in this style. We've seen this now for two or three years. Um, the semi-sheer bodice, the sheer back with the lace. Um, you've got this connection here that this intersection of different uh, combinations of fabrics um, and then you know you have your lace overlay you have your clear boning in here um, and I just thought well it's probably all the same well today's my lucky day <laughs> to have this dress um, to alter and it's not the same so anyway this is a Maggie Sotero I'll try to look up the uh, style number information and you know put it somewhere on the screen but this is a Maggie Sotero and it is different so um, let me just real quick tell you what we have been seeing with the style dress you can tell I've already worked on this side uh, the traditional way to get into this dress is you peel the lace away this is for us having to take it in okay um, it might be a little different if you're having to obviously like raise the waist or shorten the torso or let out or whatever but basically to take it in we've been peeling the lace away we've been tunneling up between the skirt layers either having to use a vent that we make in the center back seam and going in through that or just tunneling up between the layers uh, we grab this by the waist on the inside pull it wrong side out and we've had free access to all of this these seams here and then you tunnel up through here and you get all this stuff so we can just come in here pull this through alter the inside of this to take it in we separate all this stuff out then you alter your outer skirt alter your inner skirt push that back in there sew these back together and we're done okay that is not how this dress is made hello this is voiceover slash editing Brenda just jumping in to interrupt my previous rant with uh, kind of going in a different direction to explain why this dress is put together differently from what we have been seeing here we go so I want to talk about kind of the evolution of uh, the way we see boning worked with right now in our current trends so um, what we had been seeing with gowns was we had, um, just in recent years, let's say within the past 10 years or so, okay, just in normal mass manufactured bridal fashion, we would see a nice strong boning with nice strong fabric. And you could put the pressure on it and there's no waving at all happening right uh, so to get this nice rigid flowing straight look they worked with the fabric and the boning together well with the current trends being so um, almost this like ethereal translucent look that they're doing where they're um, layering tool and they uh, don't want the boning to be seen uh, they kind of are constructing gowns a little bit differently 
So uh, this is not a perfect example because this is not a clear boning, but I did pick a boning that is um, a, a really weak boning. I rarely use this boning. I really don't uh, care for it, but it's about as strong as what we would see um, in the clear boning that they're using now. So what we're seeing is a weaker boning plus a weaker fabric, and you get this. Can you see the waving that comes up in it? This is what you get when you put the pressure on it. It's going to kind of slip and slide in there, and your boning is going to wave, and so is the fabric. You're going to get rolls. Wow, <laughs> it's done, right? So you see that. So um, instead of finding other solutions um, that I think would be great, which would be maybe adding even more layers of your uh, tool or sheer fabrics and possibly even stacking your clear boning or uh, working with a manufacturer to possibly develop a stronger boning that is clear, what I have seen um, a lot of the uh, designers start to do is, uh, yes, they'll stack some more layers of their sheer fabric or tool or whatever, uh, lace, whatever it happens to be, their, their mesh illusion. Yes, they'll stack more of those, um, but they're still using a really weak boning. And so to make up for that, they are putting a lot more... Uh, seams in there, rows of stitching that you would not normally see. So when we are working within a gown, we're coming across a, a lot more seams than we would see, many more seams than what we would normally see. Um, and they are being thoroughly stitched down instead of tacked. So this is why we're getting this feeling when we're altering some of these gowns now. Um, and a lot of them have these real different kind of cuts. Um, has those uh, round cutouts in the sides um, at the waist. So you, you see all these things that are really defying the physics of what we need for a strong gown. Uh, so here is the same boning as this. It's the same fabric as this. Um, I just used a, an English net. But this time I stacked a few layers and I just did some stitching across um, here and across here and so now when you put the strength on it put the pull on it let's see if I can get on it where near where that row of stitches is look at how much straighter this is behaving where it's stabilized watch this all right there's a little bit you can see a little bit of an S curve starting in there in the middle where it's away from the seams still nothing like the other one right and then let's get back down here also this this one uh, the boning already had a wave in it right here so let's look at this as normal for this okay so we're gonna watch how it moves very little very little so that is why we're seeing these gowns put together more in the ready-to-wear style. You see uh, just things sewn off, layers of fabric sewn together, um, instead of seeing like your lining layer floating completely independent from your shell layer or your outer layer. Um, this, I think, is why they're doing it. So I just want you to fully understand the kind of the engineering, the science, um, the physics behind what's happening in the popular styles right now and why we're having to alter them differently, why they look completely different inside. You're going to start with taking the lace away. This part is still fairly standard. We just pick it away very carefully with our razor. I have a whole video on how to use a razor with your sewing. And you can go watch that video and see all the details of that. I'm not going to make you watch me peel all of this lace away. 
that would be way too time consuming. But I will tell you before I advance this on to the next step, don't forget, please hit subscribe so that you're notified. As of right now, I'm only uploading, I don't know, once a month or so. Um, but starting this fall, when I severely cut back the number of brides that I sew for, I hope to upload quite regularly. So you don't want to miss out on that notification. And that's when I will finally be able to go live with my e-courses. Right now, I just don't have time. I have the footage, but I don't want to sell you an e-course and then not be able to be there to help you through it and answer questions and everything. You can also go to my website, bridalsewingtechniques.com. You can sign up for when my e-courses are released. You can sign up for me to notify you if I find out of some amazing sales event or some special code you can use to get a discount somewhere. You can sign up for that email list. And you can also reach out to me if you ever want to come to a retreat with me where you watch me run my bridal sewing studio. And it includes copies of contracts, all the goodies. We sit side by side and I will go over your business plan with you and we talk financial things, how to set your rate, all kinds of good stuff. It is a game changer. I've had so many women go through that and leave here. I'm going to release this from the inside. Um, I'll show you that when I get to it. This part right here is easier to release from the inside. But I've had many women go on to leave the retreat and go home and start an amazing bridal sewing business. And you can do that too. Alright, so I'm going to continue to break this away and this away to give me a nice path down each side. I'll see you in a minute. They sewed the lace down through all of the top layers. Not the lining, but they sewed it to tulle, glitter tulle, and then the knit layer. That's kind of your shell, your main color layer, your solid layer. Um, and they didn't do it anywhere else, just on the side seams. So you have it only sewn to the tool elsewhere, and the side seams it's sewn clear through, um, which I'm hoping they're thinking, well, maybe it'll lay flatter, but it actually doesn't. It's kind of rumply, even though in places that it fits the bride, I, I find that it's not falling quite as gracefully. So anyways, let's get inside the dress. I have this vent, this little access vent that I put in the center back seam. I just slit that open with a razor and I'm going to tunnel up through here. Now this is where I normally tunnel and my hand can go up in here. Um, and it's maybe sometimes like basted through here or whatever, but that's not the case in this dress. Completely closed off. So here's the skirt. This is the part where I was talking about it's going to be easier to separate the lace on the inside. And just get it wherever that invisible thread is going clear through. And you can see again what I was just talking about. It goes clear through all the layers here, but it's not going through here. It's just on the side seams. And it's just the total width of the seam allowance. I'm gonna flip this. I'm gonna pick that away.
just a little bit more to pick there. All right, so then this is how we get to the side seams to alter them. We're going to release the seam allowances. This is at the waist of the dress, okay, that intersection that I was talking about. Oh, my goodness. And this has been sewn over, like, ju -ju 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 -ju. it's been really thoroughly sewn over to the point that it's quite destructive to that tool. To even get it apart, it's quite chewed up. So sad. I mean, it's their dress. They can do whatever they want, right? Alright, so... Normally I just pull these apart and tunnel up in there and change the fit. But to get enough space, I just go ahead and open the side seams of the skirt. That also will lead me down a proper trail to get all of these, the horizontal waist seams separated. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you can see the thousands of stitches. Oh my. You could just open the, the bodice part, the side seam of the bodice part, and get in there and alter that and hand sew it shut. So it doesn't have to be this involved, but I have to take in the entire side of the bodice and then six inches down of the skirt. So I'm going to go ahead, just to give me room, I'm going to open this lining, probably about eight inches since I'm taking it in six inches down. Do about eight inches, give me plenty of room to work, all right, on both sides. I've got that. Now this is the part that's different. This is the bodice, front of the bodice, okay, this is the back. And there's, you can't get there from here. <laughs> you cannot get there from here. So, we have to separate those seams at the waist. Now, do remember this waist seam, this horizontal waist seam, it does sew through the boning right here. So, try to remember that when you go to sew it back together. All right, so I'm gonna find, let me see that, I'm gonna find this little tab in here. That's the layer that I need to get into. I'm gonna split these layers far enough across to where I can pull it down and through. I know sometimes I'm kind of a little bit out of focus. If I put it on autofocus tracking, it just goes everywhere. So I have it on manual focus, so about right here. So sorry, it's sometimes a little bit out of focus, but I think you can t still tell what I'm doing. Um, so anyway, now you go in this way. Go up to the underarm area, see it beside the bus pad. You got to get a hold of that corner. This is this is tight. Okay, this is very tight. Oh, and lucky. <sighs> when they sewed the bus pad on, somebody stitched clear through all of the layers. This one, they just went through that lining layer. That's how it should have been. All right, so I'm going to grab this corner. I'm going to pull it through. This is going to be quite tight. So this is the way we get to the side seam. I'm going to 
tunnel back through. Make sure all my lace is pulled to the side. I could have basted it away, but this is such a time consuming alteration that I was like, forget it. Could have gone in through there. All right, so my favorite foot for this, so I can get as close to this as I can, is this, I don't remember if this is the left or the right zipper foot. I don't remember which one it is. But it's the one that doesn't have a foot on the left side. The, all the foot is on the right. So, I gotta keep making sure that lace stays away. I don't actually need all of the lace to stay out of the way. I just need one side of the lace to stay out of the way because the other side is gonna overlap. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. All right, so I'm going to take this in about an inch total. It's going to be like a half an inch folded, which means it's an inch total. It doubles, right? So the seam is right there. So I'm sewing just a little over a half an inch. The waist is definitely a half an inch. Is a little bit of a pair. So I took it in a little bit more at the top than I did here. All right, so I just went all the way down. That part is so easy. That's like the easiest part. I don't even move the boning because it's going to be right inside of there. It still works just fine. Now I got to very gently pull all this through. So again, I get it by that underarm corner. Hold your breath. You don't want to rip the mesh. It's so scary. Whew. All right. Shake it out. Okay. Now, let's do... Okay. You're going to have to release this little bit of tool right here. Don't be scared because it's going to be covered with lace. But you got to make sure your tool is released all the way up to where you're going to sew. All right, so I'm going to make sure all my corners align here. Make sure all my lace is tucked in. This foot is still amazing for this alteration. And I'm going to sew. exact amount that I left off at the bodice. Alright, bring that in. And remember, I'm only doing about six inches that it needs to be taken in, but there's a taper worked into that. Keep stuffing all my lace out of the way. That part is normal. We always have to do that. I like to almost make an embroidery hoop with my hands and just really kind of stretch it to get any little bumps out of it. With this not having the tool to make it tighter, you can actually sew it a little bit tighter if you want than your outer layer because it's got a lot of stretch to it. All right, so now we got to sew this whole waist seam back together. Again, what I was saying, you could have just disconnected. I guess at the beginning of the alteration, you could disconnect this whole waist if you want and go back in. This is one part that they did do really well here. They've got a clip for the seam, for the seam, and another clip. So that's nice that we've got these little snips to help guide us. Again, this is the great foot for this. If you guys don't have this foot, wow, you're missing out. Go to the products page of my website, bridalsewingtechniques.com, and I will link to those feet. I'll also try to link to them in the item description below. 
Now, a lot of these suppliers, they kind of change ownership, the business changes over time, whatever. When I link to something, that doesn't mean it's always going to be the perfect product. Go ahead and follow that link to find the product. And then read up on that store, make sure you're buying what you want, shop around a little bit, comparison shop, and then if it's still the right thing, go ahead and go for it. But so much volatility and items and how they're listed and what you get and stuff over time. So when I put that link in, you could be watching this video three years later, you know, and who knows? Who knows if that seller is still reputable at that time. So just check all that out. Alright, so I'm going to get kind of these extra little threads out of the way. Everything is sewn back up and nice and neat. Very good. So now we're ready to flip it back and uh, sew all of that lace down on the side. I do want to show you before we sew the lace down. This is kind of how it's supposed to look on the inside. It's nice and neat. No bumps anywhere. It's kind of funny though that these side seams don't perfectly align. Um, but everything is laying super flat and that's really what matters there. Right? All of this needs to just be stitched down. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the applique stitch on top of here and a little bit here and then I'm going to hand stitch this down and just float the lace on the top tool as we normally do. Um, because this has a bagged hem, I can't just go up between the layers and do that top stitch through all those layers the way they did it. Um, I'm assuming they sewed the hem together last and that made things easier for them, but we don't undo an entire hem just to alter the sides. So I'm going to hand stitch this part. As those of you who uh, subscribe to me know, I do have a separate machine that I do the invisible applique stitch with. It's a Singer um, that I converted just for that. I'm actually not going to use that on this project though. I'm going to go ahead and use this Juki of mine because it's just this small amount. I use that Singer more for hems. I do it sometimes on bodices when it's a small amount like this that requires some really fancy footwork, I found it's a little bit easier for me to nail it with my Juki um, than with that Singer that I converted. But I do have footage on that video of me sewing a bodice with it. It, it does a lovely job. Don't take it as me knocking it. It really does a lovely job on it. I've just found it to be easier when it's just a bodice to go ahead and do invisible. I'm going to show you all the steps to this because so many of you ask about it. Alright, so I've got my invisible bobbin thread. One very important thing to know about that is I always, always hand wind my invisible bobbin thread because I find that if you let the machine wind it, it'll stretch it and it gets too tight and then my work is drawn up in the end. So I'm switching this over to a visible thread. Also, if you fight with your tensions with that, you can always loosen this a little bit. Here we go. Slide it under carefully, making sure that needle is up and it wasn't going to catch my dress. Alright, so I've got the knee lift with this machine. I do have an entire video on how to do this applique stitch. But I'm going to stitch forward, back, 
just to lock that. This is a size 18 needle. That is crucial. And I'm going to kind of stretch the dress again like an embroidery hoop with my hand. And I'm going to mostly sew this edge, but I'm going to grab this seam every now and then. And every now and then I'm going to stop and lock my stitch because when I'm doing this applique stitch, I'm raising the foot, releasing the tension completely, and I don't want this to be so loose that it's just floating. So every little bit I stop, release the presser foot, do a little back and forth tack. That's why changing this tension is important. And that's going to kind of hold things in place for you. Now, this one particular piece of lace was like that, right, to cover that side seam. So I'm going to put it back like that. I think that was really important that it looked that way. This kind of stitching, there is a lot of risk that you might get your finger with the needle. Many a seamstress has gotten her finger with the needle with the stitching. Thank God, oh, I have not. I don't know that I won't ever, but I have not. I would never uh, let my kids talk to me or be playing in the sewing room or anything like that while I was doing this kind of stitch. I didn't want any distractions. Plus I them and turn them out if they did. And that piece that I clipped, I'm going to look at it afterward. If it looks bad, I'll add a little flower. I'll take a little flower from somewhere else on the dress that would never be noticed, like maybe a little leaf or something, and put it on the tip if it looks bad. I don't know that it will, though. I cut it quite cleanly. All right, so we definitely want to go ahead and sew over all these layers near the waist. Nice and flat. Lock that. Make sure your needle is completely raised up. Uh, because invisible thread is so stretchy, I pull out quite a bit before I snip. All right. That is sewn down. Lovely. And I'll press that, and that'll get all the little rumples out. Um, plus, the dress is tight now, so when she wears it, it's going to be quite pressed. I do like that this was not covered in beads that all fell off when we released it. You can see how we've got all these other beads, and they left that off here. I think that's great. It's more comfortable for the bride because her arm is going to be rubbing here, and it saves her a lot of money. So that's good. All right, so now I'm going to hand sew this down. I don't usually use completely invisible thread for hand sewing. Sometimes I have to, but I prefer this. It's very, very fine. People aren't normally going to see it. Scala 200, Guterman. To reference, this is their 100. So I'm going to start under and through that loop to really lock it. Now I'm only going to pick up the very edge of this lace.
I want most of my traveling to happen under the lace. And then I just come up for air just a little bit to grab the edge of the lace. That's what gives me little bitty stitches. If your stitches look super long, it's because you're jumping from one spot to the other above the lace, on top of the lace. You want to go under the lace and get it. And you saw how that whole piece lifted up a little bit, right? So every now and then, you're going to want to just make a little knot. Tunnel under. Still make sure you're stretching the fabric with both of your hands while you're stitching. You want nice, light, even stitches. A lot of times the sign of beginner hand sewing or amateur hand sewing is that it's sewn way too tight. And you can see puckers from the stitches. Alright, where this end of this lace design stops, I'm going to go ahead and just do a loop of stitching over it to kind of limit the amount of fraying that it can do. Alright. Stretching. Tunneling under. Can you tell I'm emphasizing that? <laughs> That's so important. Alright, so here we go. We're almost done. Then after this, all we have to do is press it. Obviously, this entire project is done twice because we're taking it up on both sides. I would also typically, if the bride is not the nervous type, and you can just forewarn her, I do like to have one fitting with the lace still kind of shagging away. So that way the gown is easily adjusted should it not fit her perfectly. That is my ideal. Now, if you have a very nervous bride, or there's just no question, it's a fairly standard take-up amount. Um, by nervous bride, I mean, if you say to her, okay, at this fitting, all of this lace is going to be loose on the sides, and that's okay, that's normal. If you say that to her, and you still think she's going to cry, <laughs> then don't do that. Don't let her see her dress that way. But most brides are, they're okay with it as long as you let them know ahead of time. Just don't let them go into the changing room and see their dress all ripped apart with no notice. That's when you're going to get some tears. And I'll put a tailor's ham under here because you always want to iron the hips. <laughs> On a curve, can you see? <laughs> Again, that is linked to on my website. So is my iron. I can see the comment section now. Where did you get that iron? What is that iron? The iron is set to nylon. So, no, it's not going to burn the dress. And she's ready to try it on.